Considering how I actually failed the final exam and two of the lab quizzes, there must have been some insane scaling done behind the scenes for me to get an above average grade. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was CompSci 259. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking CompSci 259 during the 2023 slash 2024 school year. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is CompSci 259 all about? In this course, you'll be learning about data structures and algorithms for electrical engineering students, expanding on the C programming knowledge that you've accumulated from AppSci 160 from first year. You'll learn about how to use different data structures such as linked lists, stacks and queues, trees and hash tables, and about different sorting and searching algorithms and their respective efficiencies. This course heavily relies on your C programming knowledge from AppSci 160, so I'd recommend brushing up on some of that before you head into this course. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how CompSci 259 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have three hours of lectures to attend, where the professor will explain the main course concepts through a mixture of theory, discussions, and some examples. In our year, these lectures were live streamed on Zoom and were recorded for us for future use. And the annotated lecture slides were posted on Canvas after each lecture. iClicker questions may be asked during class and they do count towards a participation grade at the end of the term. However, you just have to answer the question to get the participation mark and you don't necessarily have to get it correct. Additionally, during the week, you will also have a two hour lab session that is designed for you to work on your lab assignments and to do your lab quizzes in, which we'll get into in just a second. In two week cycles throughout the term, you will have five lab assignments in total that each consists of two components an in-lab assignment and a take-home assignment. You can choose to work on these lab assignments with a partner or not, and they are fairly similar to the one that you've completed in AppSci 160, but just with a lot more reading and you'll be working a lot in Visual Studio. For each lab assignment, there will be a fairly long-ish procedure that you'll have to read through that outlines what you'll be doing for each lab assignment and what you'll have to submit. Speaking of submissions, all of your deliverables for the labs are to be submitted onto Prairie Learn, which you probably remember very well from first year. Both the in-lab and take-home assignments will be auto-graded on Prairie Learn, but the take-home assignments will also be marked for coding style by a TA. Generally speaking, the in-lab assignments are shorter, easier, and given with more instructions, while the take-home assignments are longer, more difficult, and the instructions are a lot less structured. You will also have four lab quizzes scattered throughout the term every two to three weeks. These lab quizzes are to be completed during your weekly lab session and are designed to test your understanding of the concepts taught in the lectures. You will have 80 minutes to write your lab quiz and they generally consist of three to five non-coding questions and one coding question. The lab quizzes are auto graded on the spot except for a small portion of your coding question which will be marked for style by a TA. In terms of required materials for this course, all you really need is a decent laptop that can run Visual Studio on it as your lab assignments have to be completed using Visual Studio. Additionally, one of your lab assignments may require you to use MATLAB, so if you don't already have it downloaded on your laptop, I'd suggest you do so. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in CompSci 259. In the first third of the course, you'll be refreshing and building upon your C programming base of knowledge by reviewing some AppSci 160 concepts and then learning about pointers, dynamic memory, strings, and structures in C. These concepts will be frequently used throughout the rest of the course and will serve as your new foundation of C programming knowledge. In the second third of the course, you'll cover asymptotic analysis, linked lists, stacks and queues, and recursion. 
these topics get into more of the nitty gritty of the data structures and algorithms theme of this course. As linked lists, stacks, and queues are all different types of data structures, recursion is a type of algorithm, and asymptotic analysis is used to examine the runtimes of different algorithms and for performing different actions. And in the last third of the course, you'll learn about trees, priority queues, binary heaps, different sorting algorithms, and hash tables. Trees, priority queues, and binary heaps are just other data structures that each have their own properties, traversal methods, and runtime analyses. For the sorting unit, you'll analyze a few different sorting algorithms and learn about how they work, their runtime complexities, and in which situations each algorithm is best in. And lastly, in the hash tables unit, you'll learn about how they work, different methods to probe for open addresses, and the efficiencies of these probing methods. And that's pretty much everything you're going to learn in CompSci 259. In terms of the grading scheme for CompSci 259, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting off with your iClicker participation, this will be weighted at 5% of your overall grade. Your five in-lab assignments will be weighted at 2.25% each, totaling up to 11.25% of your overall grade. And your five take-home assignments will be weighted at 5.25% each, totaling up to 26.25% of your overall grade. Regarding your quizzes and exams, you will have four lab quizzes weighted at 7% each, totaling up to 28%, and a final exam worth 29.5% of your final grade. These quizzes and exams are done through Prairie Learn, and they will have a mix of coding and non-coding questions. The coding questions should be very similar to what you've seen before in AppSci 160, and the non-coding questions can either be multiple choice or numerical answer questions. In our year, before each of our quizzes and the final exam, we were given some practice problem sets on Prairie Learn to help us study for these assessments. For each of our lab quizzes, we had 80 minutes to write them, and for our final exam, we had two and a half hours to write it. Lastly, you must have at least a 50% weighted average between the lab quizzes and the final exam in order to pass the course. In terms of materials that you can bring to the lab quizzes and the final exam, we were allowed to bring whatever notes or reference we wanted to these lab quizzes and the final exam, but they had to be printed or handwritten. Using this to our advantage, some of my friends and I drafted up a 20 page long cheat sheet for the final exam that had all of the concepts that were taught in the course and a ton of code, diagrams, screenshots of the lecture slides and example problems. I don't know if they're gonna allow this again in the future, but this is what we were allowed in our year. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into CompSci 259. If you're watching this video before course registration begins, this first tip is going to save you a lot of headache and possibly save your grade a little bit. And that is to register for a lab section that is as late into the week as possible. Because your lab quizzes are completed during your lab sessions, having a lab quiz later in the week, like on Thursday or Friday, will A, give you more time in the week to study for your lab quiz, and B, it'll give you a chance to hear what it was like from the people who took it before you. And if you have nice friends, they might even show you what types of questions will be on the quiz before you take it, which will definitely give you an advantage. For the non-coding questions on the lab quizzes and the final exam, I find it sometimes helpful to draw out what the problem looks like on paper to conceptualize it a little bit better. Especially with the data structures problems that involve stuff that's being moved around or inserted and removed a lot, drawing out the problem with a small diagram or a figure generally helps to get your thinking onto a physical space. I don't really have many other big tips for this course as I don't really like coding all that much and I didn't really do exceptionally well in this course. So here are just a bunch of rapid fire things to know about CompSci 259. Number one, if you're working with a partner for your labs, make sure to choose a good one so that you'll work well together and so that the work can be evenly distributed. Two, at least for me anyways, I could barely pay attention during the lectures and ended up cramming a lot of my studying right before the lab quizzes and the final exam. But the thing is, it wasn't like it was hard content for me to understand. I was just 
lazy and I just ended up putting it off until finals came around. And three, when all else fails for your coding questions on your lab quizzes or the final exam, just press the save and grade button with the original code template and you might actually get a few marks just from some of the test cases that are supposed to output nothing. I did this on the final exam and managed to scrape a few marks from a coding question that I did not attempt at all. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 79% in CompSci 259 and the class average was 76%. Considering how I actually failed the final exam and two of the lab quizzes, there must have been some insane scaling done behind the scenes for me to get an above average grade. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into CompSci 259. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that the next course that I'll be covering is the infamous CPEN 211. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.